anthropological jurisprudence, and we, uh, the, the historical school. And if you want, we can have a break. So 9.50, we can resume our lecture. Okay. See you 9.50. Okay, so let's continue to now with the anthropological jurisprudence to the school, this one. And here we will see first this author. I don't know if any one of you know who is. Probably, well, it's not so easy, but but he was here in Kenya. And so that's why I, I, I was asking for. Mm. But uh, what can we say about this author that is called Manilovsky, that he was a tourist, <laughs> a tourist around the world. Uh, but a, a special tourist. He used to visit places and to stay there, living with the community to understand better each community. Remember that in the past, uh, especially Savigny, realized that the study of the law cannot be just well, studying the codes, abstract ideas, abstract principles, but especially it should be an, an empirical study of the law. And that idea remained in many people uh, also in, in these guys no? that say, well, we have to study not abstract idea theories, nobody knows that they are true or not, but especially what is the law in each place. So he decided was one of the first uh, people that were living with many, many communities around the world to understand the law of there. That's why he was the first researcher to bring anthropology of the brand, living with people, no? uh, to understand what is the law there. No? Uh, he was there. Uh, he was a founder of the functional social anthropology. The the, the opposite, the structural anthropology say, well, you have to study the structure and uh, of the society to understand the society. No, he said, no, we should see uh, the behavior of the people and we, we will see you know, that in the behavior they have some aims, no? some, to serve some basic human needs, more or less is the idea. No? We will see later one example of the Trojan Islanders. And he was also here in Kenya. And he served as an academic mentor to Jomo Kenyatta, <laughs> the father and the first president of modern day Kenya, as you know very well. And he wrote also an introduction to a famous book here, Facing Mount Kenya. Uh, well, yeah, you know very well. Uh, he studied also the Kikuyu language and Kikuyu tribe and, and so on. That is quite interesting, no? And so that's why uh, I want to be la, 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 like Malinowski, no? Like uh, a, a professor of the next president of Kenya. I hope you yeah. Some of you will be. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead with now the, the theory related to the law that Malinowski has. So, what is the essence, the essence of the law for Man Malinowski? So he said, well, we have to see. We have to see, to see with observance, we will realize that there are habits, 
in each society, in each community. So the law is more a habit, a practice, but with one specific function. No, it's not just a practice because, no, no, it has its own end, no? A functional uh, practice for uh, to achieve, to protect human needs at the end of the day. Most human, most basic human needs. So after his observations of the Trojan Islanders, he realized that all of them work with one principle, the principle of reciprocity. Probably this is one of the most famous ideas of Malinowski, the principle of re reciprocity. So, uh, what is that? It's an equivalent arrangement of reciprocal services. Some people used to do that, some others used to do that, and they interchange the food of the walk. So let's put one or some images of that place. This is the islands. These are the islands of that place. You can see it's a beautiful place, no? A blue ocean, a green island, <laughs> um, a beautiful sky. Well, you, you can find similar things in, in other parts, but I think that is beautiful, this, no? And also here, I don't know, in the coast, probably is something similar. Um, when you have this kind of geography, you will have fishers. <laughs> All these people used to fish during the day deep in the sea. Uh, Where's the life deep in the sea trying to find wild fish? As you know, as you know. So what it means that they will have no fruits, they will have no, uh, well, no water to, to drink, just salad water and many other things. Instead of that, in the in the continent, you will have exactly the contrary: farmers, people that spend their life twenty five hours well in the farm, uh, well trying to find some fruit and uh, or sowing. Uh, well, you know very well what uh, what they can do there, no? So he realized that at the end of the day. The evening, both communities uh, get together to share the things that each one had. Fishers, fish, farmers, fruits, and they interchange their fruits with fish. So uh, you can see some fish there. Well, uh, it's a photo of that place. Um, and, well, and the, this is clear. and that is the way that they survive with the principle of reciprocity, <laughs> of reciprocity. Um, well, not with currency. Well, I give you, you, you give me that, and that is the base of, of the legal system of the Trojan Islanders, <laughs> as you can see. Well. I don't know if you, you agree with uh, his theory, but the, the most important thing is the approach, is the approach. What is the law? What is what I see, what I see with my eyes. And what sort of sexual that approach? Because remember, at that time, every Europe was uh, uh, and around the world trying to study the law with more empirical, a methodology with a more empirical methodology. So, and so funnily, the, the law is a habit, a practice, you know, a, a practice uh, for something to achieve one goal. The functional, functional anthropology of Malinowski. This is Malinowski, as you can see. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, Let's see now another. Also, he is not he he is not from 
Europe, he's from Johannesburg. He born in Johannesburg. Mac, Max Glubman. Uh, he had a lot of inter interesting luck, you, you will see. Was part more or less of that school. If we want to understand what really is the law, we have to see, to see, <laughs> to describe what we can we see in each community. So that's why he moved to many places, and there he spent some some time sharing well everything with the people of, of each place. And especially in this place, Barcelona. Barcelona is a kingdom, a small kingdom. Today, I think that this is still not recognized as a country, but, but well, there are some, some they have their own customs, their way of, of understand the law uh, and their culture and everything, as you know. So, he, he, after living obviously in Johannesburg and study the law, and I think in the UK, he came back to, to South Africa, uh, was against the, the colonial uh, authorities, and also the, the racism that they imposed there. So was an activist and a political activist the racism and anti-colonial structures, as you know. Uh, well, so he, you know, he was before Nelson Mandela there, but also at the same time at the end of his life. So he realized the things that he studied in the UK, that was the law, and um, the things that he saw in, in, in that little kingdom of a small community close to Johannesburg, more or less close, not, not that close, well, had a lot of similar things, you know, a lot of similar things, you no, know? and probably, and probably of the Western culture and probably of the other cultures around the world. So, for example, for example, the notion of right, the notion of duty also, no? or the definition of injury, or the, the, what we understand, what is responsibility, who, who, is, who has responsibility, who not, more or less seems to be the same in the very places, in many places around uh, Africa and the Western society, or the idea of negligence. No, well, if someone don't that, not because he has uh, uh, an intention, a will to do bad things, not because just negligence. No? It's the same, it's the same here in Africa, he said, that in the Western culture, they don't, they don't impose any idea. We have previews there, this, this was, a, this, that, that place was so interesting because they, uh, well, they have no, no, the power of the colonies at the time. And so it's, they, they, had, they had a kind of freedom so he said, but it's the same, no? It's the same. It's not an imposition of the Western culture. No? Uh, and the notion of who is guilt, no? Uh, what is to be guilt, no? Uh, well, it's the same uh, here uh, and in another community in Africa and in another community in Africa and the UK. And the, the notion of ownership, the same, no? We have this, and this is mine. This is mine. No, it's more or less the same there and here. No, uh, final trespass and many other. Uh, this is just an example. No, and then yeah. so, uh, 
and, uh, and, uh, and things that are a little more abstract, for example, the, the distinction between statutory law and customary law, well, it's so clear there also no? in these small communities that have the um, custom, nobody know from how long ago. Also about the judges, no? he, he, he realized no? that there was the idea of the reasonable man. <laughs> now, <laughs> at least today, we heard, many, you, you should hear uh, that phrase, a reasonable man. So, so, so common in many places, in the antique Rome, no? obviously they call with another name. Uh, at the end of the day, is who knows what is the law? Who knows well, this guy? No, because he is so clever, he, or because he is so old, and we will believe in him because he's the elder, and he, he should have more knowledge than us. Right? He, he should be reasonable. Well, it's so present till today here in Africa, and till today in many, many around the world. No, and why will for example, in the Western societies, uh, Europe, and not from Europe, by the way, uh, they say they, they put the case in the hands of a judge because they think that the judge will, should know more. He should be prepared to decide cases. So that is more or less the same here and there. Well, finally, certain certain behavioral norms are the same there and here, um, as well as the punishment of offenders. No? There are some things that everyone believes that they are not so good and are very serious. They should be punished. No, here, uh, I will say in Kenya in South Africa, in North Africa, and everywhere in the world. That was the idea of Glucman. No? So they realized that there is a lot of things. That is, uh, I think that is a clever, clever understanding because you can see, you can see that uh, some of will say, no, this should be very local, very local, and what we have is unique, no? Normally, you think that you are the, the only one in the world <laughs> when you don't know the world. <laughs> uh, you don't know the world, you will realize that, well, there are a lot of similarities. You will realize better what is the, the, the thing that you are peculiar, and the others are peculiar. Uh, for good or for bad, I mean, but you to open your mind is good to understand yourself. That is quite important. No? But in the field of the law, it's good to 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 have Glukman. Why? Because if there is not some similarities, the law is not just it's not a science. It's not a science. It cannot be. We don't share something that is reasonable, and you, you cannot put the reason <laughs> to create a science. No, you can just describe what you see. So that is interesting. Some other will say against Glukman, no, he exaggerates so much because there are a lot of difference. Well, I think that is clear that there, there are differences, no, but the deepest notions what. The, the innocent cannot be punished, the, the, the offenders should be punished, and someone, someone should be guilt, and what is that? And what is so clear is, is the same everywhere. Now, we have a lot of studies of these kind of things. I remember a, one conference in the, in the IDR, and it's the, the famous, Association for Philosophy of Law that is in Germany. Uh, but this, there was a, a great guy that uh, exposed about that. No? And he checked more or less 100 criminal codes, how it's regulated uh, some, some crimes. No? Uh, and he realized it's the same. 
is the same everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Every criminal code is the same. No? Probably the, the, the years of prison could be different, but, but the, the conduct is exactly the same. The, the, the difference are very, very, very small details, just details. No? So this is Glockman at the end of his life. <laughs> He said one thing that could be interesting to say at the end of our lives. <laughs> a science is any discipline in which the full of this generation can go beyond the point reached by the genius of the last generation. That is quite interesting, no? And that is why you should go further than me. <laughs> And yeah, I will explain what I understand. If you are a good student, you will understand and you will be deeper there and you will go farther than I am I, 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 here now. No, that is quite interesting. No? So let's put another example of anthropology, but now the, it's, this more recent is not and all of one, this you will not find in your book, by the way. But it's good to, to know at least three, two, three ideas of this movement. No? Today, there's a lot of discoveries of neuroscience. We will see a little more of neuroscience later and psychology, and also biology and the DNA. We have now the whole structure of the DNA, the whole information of the human DNA. Um, two, three weeks ago, they, they, they improved the gaps because the DNA was, it was from two decades ago, they have the whole structure, but there were many gaps and many mistakes. And now we have the human DNA corrected perfect today, perfect from the last month, I mean. So they realized that we have a biology and an evolution. They say, well, let's see an evolution, what is related to the law. Uh, for sure, you know, this the missing, missing link theory. Uh, you can believe on evolution or not. Uh, I believe uh, that our body is a product of evolution or a spirit, no. Our spirit should be created by God directly in each human being. So the notion of the spirit is not matter. You cannot say that matter after evolution and create the spirit because nothing gives is previous, nothing that, that things doesn't have. We can give just what we have. Matter cannot give the spirit because it's precisely the contrary. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but in any case, I, I believe that uh, you can believe or not. Yeah. But I will try, try to explain the standard theory of evolution today, the standard theory of the creation of the planet Earth. According to the standard theory, the universe, the Big Bang, was created. Uh, 40 billion years ago, 14, uh, um, after 10 uh, billion years ago, uh, planet Earth was created, I mean, appeared as a consequence of everything, no? And soon after that, just 500 million of the creation of the early Earth, water appeared on planet Earth. That is incredible. By the way, two weeks ago, the scientists discovered humidity in one of the moons of Jupiter. That is quite interesting. Not just ice, humidity also. Yeah, well, I, know. I love this kind of thing, as you can see. <laughs> well, and there are appear many things. Um, and then, and then, uh, appeared also the, the first 
single cell life. And well, the, there is a lot of theories of that, how, how it was. And they were the Archaeum uh, uh, age, the Archaeum, as you can see. What is the Archaeum? Because they say there is a lot of theories here. No? Previously, it was one form of life and what split it in three the bacteria, eukaryotes, and archaea. Now people, that was the first theory. Now people used to believe that the, from the first form of life, there was a, just two, a division of two things, bacteria and archaea. Um, later, uh, eukaryotes appeared, eukaryotes. Here you can find plants and animals. We are eukaryotes. I don't know if you realize that we are eukaryotes. <laughs> You are a great eukaryote. <laughs> so, and that's why this part of the uh, of the age of the Earth is called Archean because life appeared here in the form at the beginning. They, they thought that was Archean. Um, well, in any case, little by little, what was of, uh, the first photosynthesis, and with the photosynthesis the oxygen appeared in our earth. A lot of oxygen. There was, they call the oxygen crisis, but no crisis for, for bad and for good, because there was a lot more than today, much more than today. And probably we cannot survive if we live at that time, because it was too much, <laughs> too much. Um, uh, our, our, our heaven appeared here, no, our sky that we have here appear at that time, in that crisis. You know? There was no sky as we know it today. Yeah. So after that crisis, well, there were many, many things that happened. And then oxygen crisis here, you can see. You know? And there's the atmospheric oxygen. And then appeared the eukaryotes and the early fungi. And sexual reproduction, sexual reproduction here. So more than one billion years ago, more than one billion, billion years ago, the, the first difference between sex, male and female, and the reproduction. So uh, that is incredible, no? Uh, um, an organ quite well designed to reproduce and to continue the species. Human being till today cannot do that. I mean, with with technology, just with our bodies, no, that we received. Uh, it was a creation of one thousand, one billion years ago. Well, it appears now, and then appeared well the first uh, animals, plants, plants, but for then animals, then many other things. After that, the, the dinosaurs in that, that, that phase, and after dinosaurs are more or less um, overlapped, mammals, mammals. Uh, uh, but mammals will su survive, and dinosaurs not. <laughs> uh, probably because well, there are many theories. Uh, meteorite that falls in Mexico, more or less, people used to say. And after that, well, uh, you know, many other things. Mammals were split in many. The first mammal was so, so small, so small, like our hand. And, and then we were divided little by little. And we have many mammals in the sea today. Uh, but not only in the sea, but also in many places. And the primates, the primates will be a new, a new uh, well, species that will be split in many. In the new mon world monkeys and in the old world anthropoids. No, um, the old world anthropoids will lose the tail. Um, some of them will, will live not under, not uh, into the trees, but uh, walking 
on Earth, as you know, no? Five, five billion, million years ago, well, appears ominous, no? Ominous, and you have here many types of them. Uh, the gorilla, the panther, the chimpanzees, and many others. And four billion years ago appeared. Well, that is in, in, very interesting to 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 you know, the Australopithecus, no? But what divided divided in many species, and all of them disappeared. Were more or less similar to, to Homo sapiens. That is three hundred uh, years ago, three hundred thousand years ago. So there are many people that believe that. Here, for example, uh, all of them were had knowledge because they, they have fire. They control the fire from this age, for more, more or less, two, two three, three billion years ago. It seems to be that the first earliest discoveries uh, was 2.5 million years ago. And they have also tools in your your national museum here in Kenya, in some of these species, Lucy and many others that are very interesting. Uh, I was there, I was amazed being there, discovering these kind of things here. No? I want to go to Turkana someday to see these kind of things. So, others say no, the just uh, Russian only homo sapiens, Today, they say, well, Neanderthal and Homo sapiens should have uh, knowledge, abstract knowledge, I mean. Uh, well, I believe that all of them have, but you can believe whatever you want. And why I'm talking about these kind of things, no? No, they're so interesting. I think so. I really love this kind of thing. Uh, well, because, because, uh, there is an approach to the law that say, well, you see, we are part of evolution. And we, if we want to understand what is the law, let, we should see not just only our species, but others that are so close to us. There are many, for example, you can see, let's see our DNA, no? We share with chimpanzees 98%. So no, other people will say less. Less, the less one that I heard, 93%. But okay, but this is a lot in any case, no? And with mouse, with a single mouse, <laughs> 92%. And with plants, well, with just 26% of our DNA. So it means that at least we share something with them, no? By evolution or by any other possibility. I, well, yes, and um, for example, with other human, almost the hundred percent, but not the hundred percent. That is interesting because we we have some difference, as you know. Uh, and with dog, eighty-four percent. With grapes, twenty-five percent. No. With fruit flies, almost the half of our DNA, which we share with them. So you can see, you can see that that there is, we have a lot in common with them. And if we see some other things, we can ground better the law. So today you can find many studies, for example, of property, property law. And they say, well, look, so many species in the world have, have the territory, the spiders have one territory that control very well, not so big, obviously, no, but the small territory, and this is my place, and anything that is here, I will control. <laughs> and also hummingbirds, hummingbirds are very territorial. They they protect the area. I don't know if you, you, you see uh, that you, you, you saw in the past in your, well, in your land, hummingbirds are very territorial. So they, they use to attack any little animal that approach, no? Because this is my place. 
Probably not all hummingbirds, but many around the world are very, very territorial. And also, uh, well, lions, lions, no, they have a big territory, no? What they can see, two kilometers away, they can see um, animals we never approach, no? I, I was in, in some safaris and I was close to the lions and people used to say, try to see if close to you is some animal. You cannot see any animal in the next uh, two kilometers, no? Because when the other animals see a lion, they will run away. <laughs> yeah, it's the lion's territory, no? So they say, well, that is the foundation of human property. No? We are also a developed species. <laughs> so we have to, to protect and the law should protect. Well, I don't know what they think about this theory. I will put another example. No? There are many species that are monogamous. Monogamous, uh, many birds. Uh, many also fish, uh, also a lot of mammals. Uh, one of the most incredible is the dick dick. The dick dick uh, is uh, uh, always you can find two, one not just a single one, always two. And if someone die, dies, uh, the other probably will die soon because cannot live with his uh, its partner. <laughs> A love story. <laughs> yeah. Well, so they say, well, we are part of the monogamous species. And we, the law should approve that because it is in, inside of us. It's part of our biological behavior. But they say, well, then, and that, that is not so clear, but many species are, are just uh, monogamous, yes, but they will take another and another, but always one at the same time, but not the, so they are, they call serial monogamous. We should be also serial monogamous. <laughs> Do you agree with them? What do you think about this? No one of you. <laughs> well, I will say that we can also see that many species, that many species have a, another word. A weird and strange behavior. For example, snakes, crocodiles, some gorillas also, they ate their children. <laughs> so we cannot say, well, if we see that in some species, well, the human being also should eat. Uh, our children. <laughs> well, children are not for food. <laughs> for that species could be, but not for human species. They also kill each other because they want to mate or, uh, or many other things, no? to see who is the leader. No, to kill each other, to see who is the leader. You can see that, that in history, uh, there are people that there are some cases of mother eating their children, um, also of people killing for be the president. <laughs> but we we realize that that is not good, and that's we why we say no, they are guilty, and they if, and if we have the power, we will put them in prison because that is not so good. So that is quite interesting. We have reason, we have reason. So there is quite different approach to the law. I will say, I will say that that school as any other got part of the truth. For example, if you re realize that something is exactly the same in the last 1000 years 
with no exception, probably the law should take care of that. In sexual reproduction is something specific <laughs> in the last one billion years, not what some say one thousand years, not billion years, billion years. Well, probably we, we should respect what, what is that. And there are two things now. One is to understand things now, bio, bio, biology, but directly just biology. I mean, uh, how each this organ, this sexual organ works, and what is for, what is the object, is the functions, and, and so on. And one different thing is to behavior, because behavior is a little different. So. Is you see that is for this our eyes for C to, to, to get light, but that is for <laughs> no. our tongues to taste uh, and to eat, but that is for no. and one, dif one different thing is what I do with my tongue, where I will go today and tomorrow. Uh, migration of species that is quite different, that, that could be changed. The technical word is malleability. You know, how malleable is the behavior of this species? So if there is no malleability, well, we, we have to protect that. But if there is a lot of malleability, yeah, flexibility in the behavior, well, probably the law is not so, so rigid in that topic. Okay, that is the biological, evolutionary biological school of the law. Here we have. Let's go to the 